Hey guys, King Gath here, and in this guide, I'm going to go over the soldier rolls system. So in Conqueror, you have a basic soldier type, but you also have special units, which we haven't talked about yet in this playlist, and all of them can operate different roles within your army. So the roles are outside of the type of unit they might be. These are kind of what their purpose is. You get to decide what it is that each of your soldiers is adding as a value to your army and to the particular settlement they're stationed at. So there are four types, and by the time you watch this, there may be additional types, and uh, if so, we will add additional videos to cover that. But at the time of this recording, there are four types there's technically a fifth type which doesn't show up on the menus i'm about to show you and that's the personal guard type we'll talk about that in its own video because it's a very deep system and it will probably take a 20 minute video to walk out walk through and uh, the four roles are warrior patrol guard and worker so those are the four types i want to talk about right now now by default any of your soldiers when you just start your new military if you have no sim settlements plots built you'll find that everybody is a warrior and you can see what role they are by default by getting close to them and you'll see up at the, at the alternate activation it will tell you their type now this guy's a guard because i just assigned him to a guard off camera but if they were a different type and most of yours will be if you haven't played around with this will be warrior types and the warrior type is the most basic type of soldier they are very very flexible they can basically be used for just about anything and that is why they're the default but they don't have all of the inherent advantages that some of the other have the other types have for their particular purpose so let's go over the what each of their roles serve and what the primary advantages and disadvantages of each are so with a warrior they can basically do anything. They can work any of your plot types. They can, can can they can help control your outposts and prevent them from being taken over. And they can go on assaults. The one thing they cannot do is they cannot live inside of vassals. So once you start taking over vassals and you need to have a presence of your guys, warriors are not an option for you. Instead for that, you would need to use patrols and guards. So the warrior class is kind of your, your offensive unit, and they are the only ones that are going to go on assaults, and that's their primary major difference is the assault ability. That's, they're the only role that can do that. They also have an impact on the control and morale systems, and we'll talk about those in their own videos. So the next type we're going to talk about, and this is the type that I think often gets overlooked for new players to conquer, and it's very, very valuable, especially when you're just starting up your empire, is the worker type. So I'm going to go ahead and go into this menu. And before I go any further, I'm not going to go over every line on this particular screen. I just want to point out the second or the third and fourth lines, roll, warrior, and outpost, red rocket, truck stop. And those two will be relevant later when we start talking about other parts of the roles. I just want you to see that those are there. So uh, it shows you the current role there if for some reason there's a problem with the alternate activation where it doesn't show the role on there which can happen with certain mod conflicts or if things just got a little screwy in the back end or if somebody set up their faction pack incorrectly there are reasons but this should always be correct here so this role is is your uh, final say in what role they actually are but we're going to just focus on the change role menu we'll talk about all these other ones in other videos so under change role you'll see that the types that i mentioned are available here now if you activated this on a special unit you might find that some of these options are missing and that's because it's up to the faction pack designers to decide which roles each of their special units can operate because some of them won't make sense for them to do certain things for example if there were a vertebrate unit in the brotherhood of steel faction pack for example which i don't think there is but if there were it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense for them to be workers but it would make absolutely sense for them to be patrols so things like that where they get some flavor decision on why they might want something they could also do it for balance reasons it could be something that they only want a particular unit to work as a certain type because it's very powerful in that role for example maybe they have a really powerful unit that's a guard but it would be too op to take as a warrior something like that but basically if you find that one of these roles is missing it's probably because the faction pack decided it was needed to be limited for their special unit if you ever find that one of these roles is missing for a basic soldier type so this is your your shock trooper your the majority of your units are generally going to be this and you're missing here you probably found a bug you should report it on simsettlements.com so the worker role is one you'll find that a lot of your guys already are and that is because anybody who's assigned to a commercial industrial or agricultural plot is automatically converted to a worker 
The other one you might find some of your guys are automatically converted to is the guard type, and that is if they are assigned to a martial plot. Now, if you don't want your roles automatically changing on you and you want to have full control of that independently of their plot assignments, I'm going to show you where to do that. So if you go into either the MCM mod config menu or the Sim Settlements Conqueror section of the City Manager's holotape, you'll find that under the assignment subtype of that, there's an auto change roles option. This is on by default because I think most of you will want it on because it just makes life a lot easier so you don't have to do things twice. But if you want that to be able to mix and match and have, say, for example, your warriors stationed at guard posts without being turned into guard, I'm sorry, stationed at martial plots without being converted to guards, you can do that. So there are reasons not to do it. And there's, and you'll find out after I explain all this why this is on by default. But uh, that is what's ha making that happen if you're confused about why it's happening. So let's go back in one more time to this menu here. So the uh, worker role is one of the more valuable ones, especially in an early empire. And it provides a couple of things here. First off, it doubles the production of wages, rations, and equipment that that particular plot that worker is on is operating. So we talked about in the needs video. So if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, go back and check that out. But the soldier needs video, we talked about the fact that agricultural, commercial, industrial plots produce the resources that are needed to operate your factions. And a worker will double the production that that particular plot is providing. The other benefit to them is that they only require rations and wages. They do not need equipment, which means that overall they they produce more than they consume. So even though maybe in an individual category, they don't produce more than they consume. So for example, if they're working agricultural, they're still con consuming wages. So they're not producing more than that. But the total number of of agricultural uh, rations that they're producing will be higher than the tw the 10 rations plus 10 wages they're consuming. So they're consuming a total of 20 resources, but they'll produ be producing much more than that over time, especially because the number of resources produced by a plot type is also affected by the plot level and other factors which we'll cover in future videos. So workers is a great way to boost your production and make it so that you can that you can recruit more soldiers. I think one of the number one mistakes people make with Conqueror is expanding too quickly, and instead they should be hunkering down in one of their bases or in a couple of outposts and building up the number of troops they have by making as many people as possible workers to up that resource count so that they can continue to recruit more and more people before they keep expanding. So this is one of those things to help you do that. The next role, Guard. In order to understand the purpose of the guard role, you need to know a little bit about the hostile takeover and control system uh, to fully understand them. But without even understanding that, the big benefit they have that that almost nobody else does is that they can actually live inside of vassals. So just from a flavor perspective, if you're a conqueror, you probably want to have some guards there. You want to have some people making sure that those factions stay loyal to you. And if you're playing liberator, you could treat that as these are guards that are there to protect those settlers from the outside world. So either way, just from a flavor perspective, without understanding the hostile takeover and control system, you might want guards just because they're the only way you can station people at vassals. Now, another reason that you might want them without going too in depth into those other systems is that they are one of the only types the guards and warriors are the only type that will fight to the death so if your settlement gets attacked and you have no warriors and no guards your workers will surrender they will not fight back they will fight while there are guards and warriors but if there's nobody else they're going to surrender so just from that perspective you might want guards because of the way the attack system works so if you guys have watched the assault system or if you've played much conqueror you'll know that you're generally selecting not by individual person i'm not going around and selecting each of the the soldiers i want to take instead i am choosing by role or by rank or by special unit type so when you do that the actual soldiers that fit those criteria could come from any of your outposts that's all kind of done randomly in the background and when you have a small army when you've got a small empire where you don't have a lot of guys it's not a problem you can probably guess exactly which ones it'll be it'll be but once your empire starts getting much larger it would be too much of a hassle to individually select units anyway and so the the dynamic selection is important but then so too is the guard role because if you were relying entirely on warriors to prevent your place from being taken over to ensure that your workers would continue to fight if you were under attack while you were out doing other things is that you uh, if you only use warriors and you started an assault if all of the warriors from a particular outpost happened to get sent and you had no guards left and then an attack happened while you were out doing things then that settlement would be lost because you took all your warriors with you incidentally. So guards are kind of like a, a, an insurance policy and you probably want at least one in every one of your outposts and vassals. 
All right, so then the last type we haven't talked about, this is my favorite one from a flavor perspective, and it's very, very powerful within the gameplay systems, but it's hard to understand the gameplay benefit until you understand the control system, so we'll talk about that part later, but just the coolness factor of having guys doing patrol routes from your faction between your outposts and vassals and between your outposts, outpost to outpost, it just feels really cool when you're wandering around the game world and you get to slowly see your faction just kind of take over everything. And so patrols are your way to do that. Now they have a different, uh, they definitely have a benefit in gameplay mechanics and we'll talk about that more in the, when we get to the control system video. But uh, for now, I'm just gonna set this up. We can basically set up a patrol from any of your outposts to any of your vassals or from outpost to outpost. You cannot set them from vassal to vassal. You'll understand more when we talk about the control system. But the general flavor idea here is that your patrols are kind of acting as uh, enforcers and scouts to make sure that the influence of your army is felt in anywhere that they are patrolling between. So they kind of tie together your warrior power and the settlement that they're going to. So these are really cool to have. I highly recommend sending up a lot of patrols to your vassals just because they make it a lot easier to keep control of them. But again, we'll talk about that more in that video. Now, one of the things I don't think I've talked about yet is this little salute they do. Not all of the faction packs will use that salute. In fact, if you're playing with the Conqueror Raider faction, they do a little fist pump instead. And that's actually something the faction packs can control. They can control what animation that is. And thanks to uh, Sebo, who helped us put together this giant library of animations from the Adobe Mixamo collection, there are plenty of them from, to choose from. I just don't think a lot of faction packs have figured out how to do that yet or have uh, taken the time to do it. So if you find that uh, your guys are doing something a little different, the whole point of that little animation is just as a confirmation so you know that it happened. It used to be in the release version of Conqueror, or rather as soon as we added the roll system. I don't remember if we launched with that. That might have been something we added after the fact. Uh, but what would happen is, uh, oops, I can't do it from him because he's in one of my personal guards. But uh, what would happen is after that menu went away to that you assign their role a few seconds later it would come back as your confirmation and that was very very obnoxious so we switched it over to this little animation instead all right so that covers i think that covers the different roles as far as what you guys know now there's a lot more depth to them and it makes it a little easier to understand the benefits of each once you understand more of the mechanics so i would highly recommend you check out the videos on soldier needs if you haven't already and further down the playlist you'll find videos for the control system and the morale system which will further cement your understanding of the importance of these different roles but even without that they add a lot of ability for you to kind of feel like a military commander you're deciding what each, each of your soldiers is doing and what kind of benefits they're providing and you get to feel this flavor of you know how do they how do you want them operating in your particular empire so uh, another thing i want to mention before we break from this video is the fact that that you'll see that this menu is always available so i can always access that patrol menu so if i want to send my patrols home i can do so easily the other thing i'll mention from this is one of the things i pointed out on here was that the fourth line down shows you the outpost their their home is this is important for the patrols because you can look just at this screen you can see where they're patrolling between they're always going to patrol from their home to their patrol target so you can see their role it says patrol abernathy farm their origin is going to be the outpost line there so that's why that was relevant so still plenty more to learn about conqueror if you're going through this playlist one by one definitely head on to the next videos once you understand the control system and morale system you should fully grasp the power and benefit of using these different roles but they're definitely designed to give you a lot of freedom so that you can play around you can rp you can gain benefits so whether you want it for gameplay purposes or just for flavor purposes you can do a mix of both the rules tend to lighten up the further you get into the game so the larger your empire gets the more room wiggle room you'll have whereas in the early game you're going to find that you're restricted heavily just because you need resources so uh, and if you want to break free from that completely turn off the soldier needs system i've talked about what that the effects that has and how to do it in the soldier needs video